So as Noah mentioned a few weeks ago, I used to be a 9-11 truther. Now, to be fair, I don't think I was particularly hardcore about my beliefs, right? I, I posted a few deeply cringy statuses, probably left a few comments on Facebook posts I would love to see deleted. But for the most part, I managed to be set straight by that conversation with Noah without outing myself to too many folks as the jackass I was. But it was how I got there that I think is worth discussing. See, about a year before I had that conversation with Noah at the toy store, I'd gotten the brilliant idea to smoke a joint in Washington Square Park. Now, hippie mecca though it was, and while you had a pretty strict no drugs policy, and if you got caught smoking weed in your room, you could be expelled. But you see, my roommate had informed me about one simple trick. You see, the park, which was right next door to my dorm, wasn't school property. The cops were there, but they didn't care if you smoked a little weed. And even if they did, it was like a $36 ticket, so no big deal. So there I am, smoking my joint in Washington Square Park, feeling very bohemian when a cop walks up to me and tells me, hey, put that out. And I'm a 19-year-old idiot, so I say, ah, oh, man, I just started this one. And I flick the joint into the bushes. And that's when he grabbed me. See, my roommate was actually kind of right. New York City had very nearly reached its current state of decriminalization by then. And if I had, in fact, put out the joint, that officer could have written me a ticket and I'd have been on my way. But because I flicked my joint into the bushes, the cop decided that I was obstructing justice, as the TV shows call it, which is a class A misdemeanor carrying a possible prison sentence of up to a year in jail, which is exactly what he informed me as he threw me against his car so hard he broke my nose and then drove me downtown in handcuffs. Now, I want to pause for a second and acknowledge how lucky I am about how the rest of the story went. I know that for way too many people in exactly that situation, they just went to jail and had their job opportunities, their financial situations, sometimes even their lives destroyed. But my family knew a lawyer in New York City who took one look at my broken nose, had a conversation with the cops in the other room, and got me released the same night. I know how lucky I was now. But at the time, I was furious. I was certain that I was going to have this dude's badge. They hadn't even given me my possession ticket, and I was going to make sure that this dude paid. He did not. I filed a complaint. I testified in front of a city ethics board, and pretty much wherever I turned, including the multiple attorneys I independently contacted, I was informed that they were sorry that had happened to me, but them's the breaks. I was furious. How could the system have failed me like this? How could this possibly be the way things worked? I was a child of the 80s. Police officers were people you went to when you needed help. And now, every time I saw one, I got a knot in my stomach. And the people around me were not helping. My liberal friends and my teachers just kept telling me how lucky I was. And didn't I know how much harder it was for so many people around me? And my conservative friends could barely conceal the fact that they thought I got what I deserved for being such a loudmouth asshole. But you know who was sympathetic? You know who did know that the system was broken and what's more, wanted to do something about it? Anti-government loons. That's who. They said and did everything I wanted them to say and do. And in return, I believed the lies they fed me without question because they were the ones who got it. See, all too often we forget that the road to unreason is lined with very real pain. And once you go down that path, all too often the only place to go for comfort is deeper. Look, I, I get it. I too find myself wondering how I can find myself in a country where 40% thinks Donald Trump should be the president, how a frighteningly large percentage of this country believes that Hillary Clinton has participated in some child trafficking, but sometimes the road back from those positions is just as painful to take. And again, I was lucky. This super smart dude at work debunked Zeitgeist with 
without even remembering the conversation, apparently. And the article he referred me to was one of the hosts of the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe, which I then became a rabid fan of. And I escaped my bad ideas without anyone ever knowing I'd had them, right? I got to laugh along with the jokes that were about me until they weren't anymore. And to be honest, I think maybe our movement could use a bit more of that welcoming spirit. I think there's a bit too much attendance taking at the door these days. I think it's well-intentioned. I think we want our spaces to be safe and our at-risk communities to feel protected. But I think in doing so, far too often, we slam doors in the faces of folks who might belong here. By my math, there's about 43 new people listening to the show this week. 43 people who have never tuned into our show before. And if you're one of them, some of the jokes you hear this week might be about you or about who you were until very recently. And I want you to know that you're welcome, that nothing you've said or done up until this point prevents you from having a seat in the room and hearing what we've got to say. Whatever you've done, it's your little secret. And for the record, whatever brought you here, I'm sorry it happened. And we're going to treat you better. <laughs>